welcome uh, to Lipscomb. I'm so glad you all are here and that you're doing this journey with us. My name is Erin. Um, I'm the nurse practitioner at the clinic. And if you, has anybody found the clinic? Good question. <laughs> We're going to get there. Um, last year we moved a couple different times while they were renovating our space. So um, last year it was kind of hard to find us. But we are set uh, where we are. So um, we are located, and that will be on a, a slide coming up here. But um, I know a large majority of you know where Elam is. So kind of behind Elam. There's some portables back there. And then if you keep going on, uh, we're there kind of adjacent to Bison Inn and behind the academy on the, on the end of that. So if you look on your phone, it's the end of Ferndale. That's usually a little bit easier. That's how I tell EMS to get there. So um, anyway, we are so glad you are here. Again, my name is Erin. These are the uh, employees we have at the uh, health center. Uh, we've got some fabulous nurses that, you know, they, they're awesome. They're, they're the rock of the place. Melanie has been here for quite some time, and, and Julie as well. And Andrea Hardison is also an adjunct uh, teacher at the nursing school. She's the other nurse practitioner. She's there one day a week, and I'm there all the time. So uh, please reach out to us if you need anything. Uh, we're here to help and serve. Uh, we are open when all the staff offices are open. So 8 to 4.30, Monday to Friday. Uh, if we need to help with you with some other times, just let us know. Communicate with us. Um, our number is 6304. I'm sure you all have heard lots of numbers, but we are. that's our 6304. And then you can always uh, email us uh, as well about uh, appointments, etc. But medical information, we don't really email that. So we are still old-fashioned. We're going to give you all a call. So if you see our number, please don't avoid us because we will keep calling. Um, which kind of leads into a little bit about some confidentiality stuff. Um, guys, we're not here to share what all is going on with you to every single person. We don't do that. Um, your medical information is your medical information, and I hope you have that trust to know that, you know, we're, we're here for you. We want to help you, so you just need to be open and honest with us, and, and hopefully we can conquer whatever's going on together. We do work a lot with Counseling Center. Um, which Andrew will be coming up and, and speaking in a minute, and they also take confidentiality very, very, very seriously. So um, the only time that I would need to breach that is if you are in, in harm of hurting yourself or others, then I need to reach out. But otherwise, your medical information is your medical information. So you know where we are, and you can always call us on that one as well. Let me see here. Keep going. So what do we do? Well, your primary care basically when you're away. If you need, if you're on a, a medication that, that needs some refills, we can write for that. Particularly, I can write for that. Um, we can do some allergy shots, and and uh, if there's something that we can't do, we'll get you in touch with somebody that you can that that does do that. If you need more of a, a specialist care, um, for example, if you have type one diabetes and need to be under the care of an endocrinologist, we'll get you set up with that. So. Please let us know what all is going on and what you need so we can meet your needs. Um, here's a little about what we do. I'm sure you've all been to a doctor's office or a walk-in clinic. Uh, we, we'll do all that. So I can do uh, flu, strep, mono, urinalysis, those types of things in-house. And then if there are some times where we need blood, we, we'll send that out. Uh, Melanie's a really good stick. Y'all are in good hands, I promise. Um, and remember, if there's something that we can't do, we will get you in contact with the people that can. Uh, and so here's a little bit more about what we do, what we offer. Sorry, I'm getting this to try to go. Uh, it is free to come in and see the nurse if you need um, a bandage change or you need some extra Band-Aids or an ibuprofen or, or those type of, of things. If you need a consult with a medical provider, which be me, it's $20, and that does include all your testing, so the flu, the strep, the mono, um, and some over-the-counter medications, and then uh, we'll go on from there. And I don't charge for follow-up, so make sure you follow up. If you're not doing better, I need to know. We need to do something else, so please come back in and, and see us as well. So, Health insurance, get it. It's a good thing. We're not going to file insurance at the clinic, but um, I hope this never happens. But sometimes it does if you end up in a hospital. They want to know that, and if you're at a place where you can't provide that, we've got it on file. Or if we need to send out um, blood, sometimes that's a, a, a good use is to use that so you don't have to have so much out of pocket. So do that, and it'd be really great if y'all could put that on your med proctor account as well. 
And first, I just want to say thank you all. Y'all are our first guinea pig class of going through our new people of using Med Proctor. And I just appreciate your willingness and how much y'all did and, and that you really got that through. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please let us know about it. We'll also be at the resource fair afterwards. Um, what we need from y'all is what the state requires that we have to have on you. We need two MMRs. We need two varicella. We need that meningitis if you're living on campus. And I would highly recommend you also looking into meningitis B. Um, about 60% of all the new cases of meningitis were the strand of B. The state requires the meningitis MCV4, which doesn't cover B. So B is kind of that emerging one that's coming along. It is not a requirement, but it is highly recommended. So if you have any questions, again, please let me know. And then we've moved. That's what our portable looks like. So we've got uh, there are lots of construction around, as you all have seen all around campus. But we are there. Please come and see us. Okay. Welcome to Lipscomb. Hi there, my name is Andrea Mills. I'm the Assistant Director of the Counseling Center. Frank Scott is the Director. You may see him around sometime this week as well. And we are currently located in the basement of Elam on the side where the Campus Center is. If you go down those stairs, that's where we currently are. But next week we will be moving above the SAC. That's where ABP is and it's next to Azell. That's the SAC and you'll take an elevator up to the second floor. And that's where the counseling center will be, at least for this semester. And so we're, we're making that move right now, but we're available if you need us. And all your RAs and RHDs have our information to get a hold of us if you need us as well. We are open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. We have uh, four on-staff counselors and then about 17 counselors that are there part of the time. Uh, we see about 250 students a week during the semester, so it's definitely not something to feel like you're the only one who's going through whatever you're going through, because we see a lot of students who come in from a, for a variety of issues, everything from stress and anxiety to depression, suicidal thoughts, uh, angry at their uh, roommate, whatever it happens to be, we're here to support you, and we'd rather you come in earlier uh, than waiting until it gets worse, so please feel free to contact us. The way to do that is you can go online to Lipscomb's website and then it's just backslash counseling center and that you can make an appointment online that way or your My Lipscomb page which I'm sure you're already pretty sick of going to but under resources you can find the counseling center and you can make an appointment there uh, or you can just walk in or you can call us and our extension is 1781 but most people prefer to make their appointments online so you can do that we'll get back with you within 24 hours to schedule that. Visits are free and confidential. Uh, right now, they're also unlimited. So if you started coming now, you could technically continue to come all the way through your, your graduate degree if you wanted to. And we would not be limiting the number of visits that you were able to come. We don't know that that will always be true. But as of right now, and for this whole year at least, that's, that's how it is, is that we don't limit those visits. And the cost is somehow wrapped into your tuition, so uh, you don't have to pay for that. When you graduate, counseling's expensive, y'all. It's like $100 an hour or something, so take advantage now and work out some of those things and talk through some of those things. Uh, get those coping skills that you might need. Sometimes you don't realize till you go to college what you need. Sometimes you don't realize what it is that um, some of those coping skills maybe you didn't have before, you didn't need them before. So we're here to kind of help with that as well. Confidential, uh, just like the health center said, our uh, records are not part of your educational record. It's not going to follow you. People ask us that. Will this, uh, you know, be part of my transcript or follow me um, past the university? No. And no one has access to our records, no administration or anyone. We do not report policy violations. We're one of the only places on campus you can come um, and talk about some sort of Title IX violation and not what you'll hear about in your next session, I believe, and not we do not have to report those things. The Health Center is also a place where that can happen. So unless it's something related to you being imminent harm to yourself or others, then we're able to keep that confidential, uh, whatever you happen to tell us. Um, I already said we see a variety of mental health issues. Anxiety is the number one thing that we see, uh, followed pretty quickly by depression. 
Uh, but those aren't the only reasons that you can come in, and uh, you can come in for, for whatever you have going on. If for some reason uh, we don't have any appointments available when you're available, we start to fill up around midterm, uh, then all you need, we will, you can still come in and we'll give you a referral. There's just another counseling center here on campus that is more for the academy, but uh, they will see our students if for some reason we're free or we'll give you referrals to wonderful counselors we trust off campus as well. So uh, if you would prefer just to have a referral, you can contact us and we can give that to you. Now, besides just the counseling services, one of the things that we are involved in is something called Shine, which is a mental health and wellness initiative. And it's something that is new to our campus. We're trying to make sure that we offer things in, like groups and seminars and education that's more preventative in nature to be helpful uh, to the student body. And we have a special guest from Oklahoma who has come to tell us a little bit more about Shine. So uh, watch this video and then please welcome Jen. I'm Jennifer Winton, founder and executive director of UShine. We are so excited that your campus is joining us on a journey to bring awareness, education, and hope to campuses across the country. UShine started because my life story, perhaps like some of you, uh, includes chapters of brokenness where anxiety, depression, emotional distress really controlled my life. But what Satan wanted to use to destroy, God took and gave me a passion for helping others who share this struggle. Mental and emotional well-being is something that we should be talking about. It's something that we should be learning about and really bringing into the light with acceptance and understanding. There are times in our lives, I believe, where guilt and shame are appropriate responses, especially as believers. But admitting that you struggle with mental or emotional health issues should never, ever be one of those times. We have been able to successfully create a, a unique environment with our program that brings hopefulness and positivity around the topic of mental health. It's a topic that I think most of us would admit tends to be um, taboo or avoided or sometimes even scary, but we have taken this topic and really normalized it, showing students that mental health education is and should be for every single student. Every student should be plugged into this conversation. It doesn't matter their major, it doesn't matter their gender, it doesn't matter their ethnicity. We all need to be a part of this conversation. So we wanna offer students a really safe, accepting space to talk about these issues. We encourage open and honest conversations around mental health, and we encourage campus communities to be a part of this and to look out for each other. To be honest, I think that we can all admit that we either personally struggle or we know someone who does struggle who has. So none of us are exempt from this conversation and we really all should be plugged into this knowledge to share it. Ushine taught me that good mental health is a journey, not a destination. Ushine helped me manage my emotions and stress better. Ushine is for everybody, whether or not they're struggling. Ushine normalized the conversation about mental health. You shine brought hope. Hello. All right, so as the video told you, this is a nonprofit for university students focused on mental and emotional health. And as Andrea said, I'm from Oklahoma. So just a couple of things I've noticed about Nashville that I love is I think you guys might be friendlier than Oklahomans, which I didn't know that was possible. Kudos to you. Um, and the accents, I think I could listen to Professor Kate Watson, Watkins talk for hours and just soak that accent in. What I hate is the humidity. My hair is growing by the second. This is horrible, I don't know how you all do this here. Um, so I hope you guys are just adjusting well to your time here. I know you've had a lot of information today, so thanks for listening. Hopefully you can stay awake. Um, and another little side note, I actually didn't know it at the time, but I actually met my future husband at my freshman orientation. So I'm just throwing that out there. You never know. So, um, so this is Ushine's 
third year in existence. We've been at Oklahoma Christian University for the past two years. And we also have started a team in Vienna, Austria, um, which has been really fabulous to watch that there. Is anybody planning on going to the Vienna Studies Abroad in the future? Okay, great. I hope you're blessed to meet Holly Cooey. She's our executive director there, and she is just a beautiful soul and a really neat person to get to know. And then we're also launching at Oklahoma Christian Academy, which is like the Lipsum Academy here. We're going to have a program for middle school and high school students and just try to keep taking this prevention piece down. So we're really excited that Ushine is coming here and launching at a new place. Um, Andrea has put together a really fabulous team to help you guys plug in with uh, Ushine here. So one of the things that's really important is that we look at why, why we need to have this. And so one of the things I'd like for you to do is look in your booklet on the second page. And there's some statistics there that we need to talk about for a second. So 50% of students rated their mental health below average or poor, yet only 7% of parents reported their college students as experiencing mental health issues. So we see a disconnect there, right? There's a problem if you guys aren't even feeling comfortable telling your parents we have a problem, okay? 30% reported problems with their schoolwork due, due to a mental health issue. 50% of you received no education on mental health prior to coming to college. And suicide is the number two cause of death on college campuses, not car wrecks, not overdose. Um, the leading cause of death among girls 15 to 19 years old is suicide. Okay, that doesn't set, set well with me, um, and it shouldn't with you either, and that's one of the reasons that we're doing what we're doing. So over the past couple of years, because of my openness with my own personal story, which I am very open about, um, I'm also, we're gonna be at the resource fair after this with free t-shirts, you shine t-shirts, free pocket journals. Happy to visit with any of you guys um, if you wanna know more about my journey. But because of my openness, I've gotten to know a lot of university students really well and built friendships and mentorships, guys and girls, and one of the things that's been interesting to me is these students who are dealing with anxiety, depression, eating disorders, who've experienced some kind of trauma, and the list goes on, is these are not the quiet introverts who are hiding in their room and you don't even know they exist. These are high successful achievers on campus. They're part of SGA, they're in athletics, they're top in their departments. Um, and what's happened is we have created such a stigma around mental health that even these students who have really strong friendship groups don't feel comfortable sharing this. Um, many of them do now, but they felt like they needed to hide it. And so I think it's really important that we, we change this. So we, we wanna work on continuing to create to create campus cultures that make it easy for people to open up about their struggles. We gotta quit pretending like we have it all together when we don't. And we need to quit buying in the, into the lies on social media um, that tell us everyone else has it all together because we know that that's not true either. And I know you hear this and it might sound cliche, but that whole idea of that asking for help doesn't make you weak but it's, it's the truth. I've been at places in my life where it was harder to ask for help and come claim that I was struggling than it was to just keep quiet and, and quietly suffering. But you get to a point where sometimes you need help and it's better to do it earlier rather than later, okay? So being proactive about your mental health and attending events that Ushine's gonna have on campus also doesn't make you look weak. It shows that you're being smart about your, your mental health, just like you go to the gym. It's easier to maintain a healthy weight than lose 30 pounds, right? So we wanna be proactive about this and be a part of this whether you think you need it right now or not. Because when you asked me when I, when I was 18, if I thought I would ever struggle, I would have laughed at you. But now I know better. So you need to be proactive and be aware. Um, so no matter where you're at on your mental health journey, you shine can benefit you. And it also might benefit a friend of yours who might struggle at some point while they're here, who might be struggling right now and you don't know it yet, okay? 
So we're really focused on the whole person through you shine. Mind, body, and spirit is really important. Those things are all connected in one way or another. And we have built a really brilliant team. Um, I actually have a degree in interior design. I do not write any of our curriculum, so you can be assured that the people we've brought together are counselors and psychologists, um, nutritionists, exercise specialists have come together and built this amazing quality program that's gonna give you great tools and skills to kind of improve your mind, body, and spirit. And it's also been interesting to see how just the presence of having you shine at OC, even if students don't have time to attend an event, has bettered their life, just feeling comfortable to be open about, about these conversations. And I know you're wondering how you're gonna fit one more thing in your schedule. Um, I remember what it was like to be a busy university student. I was a cross country runner for part of my time at university, took a full load of classes, I worked two jobs, I was involved in leadership roles in my social service club, I had a boyfriend. Um, I know what it's like to be busy, but I also know how much something like this would have helped me in my late teens, early 20s, had I had this. And um, so I really wanna encourage you to make time to fit Ushan events into your schedule. And this is why I created the program, because I want you to know what I didn't know and that I do now. And I don't want you all to just survive while you're here and get by. I want you to thrive during your college years, and I know that you can. And I feel like being a part of this program is gonna give you skills and tools that are gonna benefit you not just now, but as you move forward into the workplace. The, the workplace um, loses, I think it's 220 something million dollars a year because of absenteeism of people struggling with mental health. So if you, on a resume or an application, can show that you are proactive and in being involved in something that bettered your resilience and your grit and your ability to handle conflict, that's going to come across uh, in a positive way to people who are looking at you in the future for jobs. So we've got two main programs to help you strengthen your mental and emotional well-being and just kind of give you information. And the first one is Ushine Conversations. You'll be hearing more about these in the um, weeks to come. So these are just more general, broad overviews. Um, mental health topics, they're about 45 minutes to an hour. There's usually gonna be probably one a month offered. Totally doable for you to fit that in. And um, so these are our foundational topics. So we have two tracks, each are seven conversations. So the foundations are anxiety, depression, exercise and nutrition and how that affects your mental health and then resilience and grit, which are things that can be learned. They're not just, you're not just necessarily born with those. And so any of these topics, anybody is gonna benefit from being a part of. And then we have two different tracks that go with the foundational pieces, and those are the, what we call the electives. So track one is conflict, um, how to help a friend through mental illness. And it's very likely that you might encounter that during your time. If you don't struggle, you might have a close friend and you need to know how to deal with that to be a good friend. And then eating disorders. So that is the first track electives. And then track two, everyday activities that boost mental health, um, problems, uh, problematic substance abuse, and then using technology for mental good. So these are the different tracks that we have for that. And then You Shine Healthy Habits is our more intensive program. It's five weeks long. And this is more of a small group. We try to keep these 12 students or smaller. And this is more specifically focused on handling anxiety and depression, but it's also just good about having good mental and emotional health. So once again, you, if you're struggling and you wanna come, we want you there. If you're not struggling, you need to come too, okay? Because these are just good general um, skills and tools to have. So we're gonna give you all of these tools and then sometimes in your life you might not use them, but they're there when you need them. So it's good to have those built into your, into your world. This program is more progressive in nature. You'll have five one hour sessions and one's gonna build on the last and you're gonna work on goal setting. And so you really want to go to all of those and be a part of all of them. So we're gonna focus on physical health strategies and then move into mental health, emotional health, social health and spiritual health. So we're gonna cover all of those. And then the last week is just wrapping up, how are you gonna sustain this? 
sometimes we get great ideas, but we don't really know how to keep using them. So we help you with goal setting and keeping those a part of your life. So we, we want to encourage every student at some point in their college career to go through this healthy habits. And I would really encourage you to do it your freshman year so you have these tools early on and you're prepared for what might be coming down the pipeline. So it's one hour a week for five weeks and then you're done. So you can find five hours in your whole year to devote to your mental and emotional health. So I really encourage you to watch for that, to sign up, and to get in a group. And they've got some really great ideas about how they're going to implement that here within departments um, and through dorms and different ways that you can put it, be put in groups where you feel comfortable being in that. And my understanding is that you're going to have chapel credit. So if that's the only reason you do it, we're totally okay with that as well. Okay. We just want you to have the information, so whatever motivates you to go, do it. So I hope that this is kind of giving you a good glimpse of the program. It's something new that you're going to have to kind of process and watch for. Um, one thing that I would encourage you to do is to, if you're not already on your phone, if you are, it's totally fine, but get your phone out, get on Instagram and follow us, because this is where you're going to get more information. Um, so you join Lipscomb. It's going to be your new page here. And then if you want to follow our just home page, it's at Ushine Central. We also have Ushine OC and Ushine Vienna are kind of our partner programs. If you're going to follow any of those, that's where you're going to get a lot of your information. There'll be sign-ups and um, posters and things around campus to watch for. And like I said, we'll be at the resource fair. Come get a free T-shirt and come talk with us. Thanks for your time. Thank you.